Today, I'm going to do a short playthrough of Zeppelin Attack, a small little deck building game by Eric Vogel and Evil Hat Productions. In this game, you are one of four Zeppelin commanders fighting each other, trying to gather fate points to buy more weapons, operatives, and defense, along with other ships, to help you along the way. The four commander decks are all essentially the same, the only difference is being in the values of the ships and their experimental ship, and some specific wording on ships. For example, the Monkey Samurai Catapult uh, target must discard one electric, where the equivalent over here is on the Lightning Cannon or the lightning projector, target must discard one coal card. So they're all essentially the same. You have four attack cards, three defense cards, a resourceful number two, and a midshipman. The four commanders are Gorilla Khan with his flagship, the Silverback, and his experimental ship, the Chimpanzee, along with the orangutan and the baboon the baboon der blitzman with his flagship der dynamo along with his experimental vessel das kraftwerk and uh, other ships der transformator and der condensator the Walking Mind, or Walking Mind, flagship the Forebrain, with his flag, his experimental ship, the Pineal, other ships the Medulla, and the Amygdala, and finally, Jacqueline Frost, with her flagship Ice Storm, along with the Leviathan, the Cold Blood, and the Winter Light. As I said before, uh, all, all of the commander's decks are essentially the same. The only difference is being in their defense, attack, and operative values. And I'll explain that, uh, what all those mean in a few minutes. And their specific special abilities on their experimental ship. So, the chimpanzee... His special is, when you play an operative card on this Zeppelin, immediately require one fate card to your hand. And I'll show you what that means. Oh, also, uh, when you start the game, you're not going to have this in your deck. You have to purchase it. It's ten fate points. I'll explain fate points too. And it can only be bought by you. So no one else gets to take your ship from you. Uh, does craft work? It is. If you attack successfully with this Zeppelin... You take an extra battle point, and I'll explain battle points as well. With the Penium, the Zeppelin cannot be attacked. It all, but if you notice, it has small values, which can be uh, detrimental. And the Leviathan. When you play attack card on this Zeppelin, immediately draw two cards, which can be nice. Setup for this game is really quite easy. Uh, you can do it in any way you feel comfortable, but in general, how they suggest is you take the five mercenary decks and split them in such a way as they're all sort of separated out and everyone can reach them. You have your attack zeppelins and your operation zeppelins. You have your operative mercenaries. You have your defense mercenaries and your attack mercenaries and then face down you have the fate deck each of these are uh, purchased using fate points you see they all have varying costs over the top and the decks are shuffled in no particular order so there may be a lower cost or a higher cost under this there's most likely a lower cost under that one 
Nine is the highest, I believe, except for the experimental ships. Same with the, uh, the extra zeppelins. There's no particular order. They all just kind of, you shuffle them in. Um, in some versions of play, I like to put them in order, so it's sort of an escalating uh, purchasing process. But that's not in the rules, and you don't have to do it. You can do it any way you want. Like all games, the point is to have fun and do it. With the next step is to pick characters. Now, this game is two to four players, but I'm going to just play two characters to give an example of how play runs through. And randomly, I'm going to take uh, Walking Mind and Gorilla Con. So we'll set these two up, and then I will run a couple rounds of play to show you how it goes. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your experimental ships out of your deck, and you're going to place them up here with the offer. Now again, only you can purchase your particular experimental ship. But they're up here in the way so everyone knows who has their ship and who doesn't have their ship. Also, each player is given two fate cards. A major plot, which is worth four fate points. And a minor mission, which is worth three points. You'll take these cards and you'll shuffle them into your deck along with all the rest of your cards. You take your flagship and you place it out. This ship always stays out. No matter what happens, you don't lose your flagship. Play is broken down into three phases. Phase one is actions. That's where you would launch any zeppelins you have in your hand. Uh, play action cards, which are attack, defense, or operatives. And uh, so yeah, I guess... That was sort of anticlimactic. So, play Zeppelins. Then you can either play Attack Card, Defense, or Operative on each particular ship. You can play as many ships down as you want. But you can only play one action per ship. In the rules, it says you can play as many as you want. And it's sort of confusing until you actually played. But what it means is... You can play as many ships and then as many actions as you're able to, which means however many ships you have. So if you only have one ship, you have one action to, to you know, so on. First thing we're going to do is we draw a hand of five cards. So I've drawn my fate card. In cussive measures, a defense card. A telepathic cannon. more defense and my resourceful number two I haven't drawn any more ships so that means I'm only gonna have one action this turn let's go over to the walking mine and get his hand he has resourceful number two and his fate card psychic amplifier Harmonic countermeasures and attack card again. Again, he only has uh, one. He only has one ship out. And he only has his flagship, so only one action is going to be played. So, Khan goes first, and now let's go over some of these numbers. Each of these numbers can be considered capacity. You have a weapons capacity of 2, defense capacity of 3, and op cast capacity of 2. Uh, so, for example, the resourceful number 2 is 2 uh, operative capacity. So I could play it here. You cannot play anything on your flagship that exceeds the capacity. If you had played another ship, let's just pull this out for example. That's a bad example. Okay, 
So we play La Fieretto, or however you pronounce that. This has an operative capacity of one. I can play this on there if I so choose. However, at the end of my turn, I've exceeded capacity, so I have to discard this ship. I've basically weighted it down and it crashed. That's how I sort of think of it. These act as weight allotment, allotments. So let's go with the turn. You can play any card you want, even out of turn. Each card has sort of different sort of effects. On defense cards, you have text that's in green. This only goes into effect if you are successfully defended. On attack cards, you have red text. This only goes into effect if you successfully attacked. Both cards may have black text as well, which is general all the time. Whether the attack is successful or not, this text will go into effect. Just like that. that on operatives, they only have, uh, at least these ones, only have black because there's nothing you can do. We got three fate cards, uh, three fate points, and everything out there is spendy. So I have seven total in my hand, in my deck, but not in my hand. So I can't really purchase anything. So I'm not going to do anything. Well, that's out of phase. Uh, we're still in phase one. But I am going to use resourceful number two. To draw three fake cards and add the lowest to my hand. So what I do is I take it and I associate it with that ship, saying that is the action that the silverback is going to do. So we come over to the fate deck. We draw three. When you draw from the fate deck, it's always public. So the other person is going to know. Now this is fortuitous because I have to take the lowest, but they're all four. So I take the four. And I put it to my hand. I take the other two and put them in the discard. Now, I can't do anything else with this ship because I've already played an action and I don't have any other ships. So now we're going to move on to phase two. Phase two is where you purchase cards. You purchase cards after actions because you can't use cards that you buy in the same turn. It's just like a lot of other deck building games, except they've separated it out into a phase now specifically. So, I have seven fate points. I could buy another operative or another defense. Or I could buy another ship. Uh, so, I think getting fake points is kind of important. You need to need to be able to get that. So, I am going to take the Treasure Hunter. It's an operative that lets me draw two fake cards and add the highest one to the top of my deck. Which can be helpful. So, that card goes to my discard pile. Spent fake points go to the fake point discard pile. Now, if I need more points, I have to somehow draw them. That's where the operatives come in. So, my turn is basically done. So, we're moving to phase through phase three, which is cleanup. Um, I can keep any of these cards that I want, or I can discard any of these cards I want in order to draw back up to my full hand size. So, I'm going to discard my attack card. Keep my defense cards, because you never know what the mind, walking mind is going to do. And draw back up to my hand size. So, I got a ship. Another attack. And another attack. So I'm good on attacks. I'll be good on this turn. I, next turn I can do several things. So that's the end of my turn. We move on. To the forebrain, what he what he's going to do. 
Now, again, he's in the same sort of predicament. He only has three fate points, but he has his resourceful number two. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to play resourceful number two. Let's me draw three. And put the lowest in my hand. Fortunately, it was an unprofitable raid. So that goes to my hand. The other two go to the discard. Can't play any more actions because I only have one ship. So I have five points that I can spend. So he is going to buy a defense card. Because Grillicon is getting a little shifty over there. So, with this one, I may draw and discard until you draw a fate card or exhaust your draw deck. That's only if I successfully defend. But I always get to draw a card and discard one card. Now, you can play... I don't know if I've said it before, but you can play defense cards... When you're not defending, if you say needed to get a card, you had a card in hand you didn't want, or you just didn't have what you needed, you can draw a card all the time. You just play it on there, draw the card, discard a card, and you're done. But we can't do anything because we've done resourceful number two. Oh, I totally forgot to take it. At the end of your turn, you clear this off. You keep them there until the end of your turn. Just sort of a reminder, this card has been exhausted. It's used up. You can't do anything to it. So, again, he's got three cards left over. Two attacks and a defense. He is going to keep all his cards. Put these to the big card discard. So, he's going to draw two cards. And he got a ship. And a ship. So he's going to be good for actions next turn. I'll have to clean up. Move back over here. And it's Grillicon's turn. So, what do we have here? We have attacks and ship. So, we play a ship. The boon. Weapon capacity 1. Defense capacity 1. So... Samurai Catapult cannot be played on the Baboon. It is too... Well, it can if I want to lose him at the end of the turn. So you'd only out overweigh a ship if it was absolutely necessary. Say, example, you're being attacked and you only had a two uh, defense. You would play that just to stop it, but then you would lose it anyway. Which, if, you have, if you're getting ships, not a big deal because you're going to get another ship out there and your deck's going to refresh. So, what are we going to do? I think Grillicon is going to attack. So, either attack with Ice Rockets and guarantee them a draw a card, or do the Monkey Catapult, and if I'm successful, cause him to discard an electric card and draw a card, but I'll get to pay one fate point less. Which really doesn't matter because I don't have anything. I don't have anything to purchase, so that effect is absolutely worthless. But as you notice, there's little symbols down here. There's four different types of attacks. There's explosive, there's cold, there's psychic, which is a purple... Oh, here it is. You got a psychic, Zach. It's a little purple swirl. And then there is electric, which I don't see out there. But it's just a little yellow lightning bolt. You'll know it when you see it. It's fairly intuitive. So, player knowledge, I know what he has, but you're not going to know what your other opponent has as for defense cards to go. So you have to decide, do you think they have a cold defense or an explosive defense? Let's say, I don't think he has a cold defense. So, one attack. I'm going to play it on the baboon. So the boon is going the boon is going to attack. Unfortunately, the only ships that is out here for 
The Walking Mind is his flagship. And whenever a flagship is attacked, you immediately draw one card before playing a defense card. You still can't uh, do capacity, overdo capacity. So we've drawn a card, and we've drawn another defense card. So we have two defense cards now. Here we go, here's Lightning Bolt. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a cold defense. So that attack goes through. But you don't lose your flagship ever. So all that means is the baboon is successfully attacked. I now get to take a battle point from the deck, from the mercenary. You can only take from these three. You cannot take ships for battle points. So, this is, if you look up here in the corner, each of these cards are worth victory points. But when you take a battle point, it is only worth one point. So you have to decide on what you're going to take and what you're willing to lose out on or uh, keep away from your opponent. So I think I will take the attack card. And all you do is take it. Uh, I like to flip it upside down. You put it underneath your flagship. And now you have a battle point at the end of the game. So we have one ship left. I could attack him again. Give him another opportunity to draw a card. To play a defense card just to get... Oh. So I forgot to do that. I attacked. It was successful. Well, it doesn't matter if it's successful. I get the draw card. So I draw a card. And I've drawn my fate card. Now I could purchase something now because I have fate points. But I only have four. And there's nothing out there with four. Even with the pay one less, uh, it's still not going to help. There's nothing out there for five. Yeah, there's nothing out there for five, so that's not going to really help me out. But I will attack again. So the silverback is going to attack with the monkey, sorry, with the monkey samurai catapult. And again, there's only one ship. He's attacking the forebrain. So again, draw the card. An attack card doesn't do any good. But that is an explosive attack. He has explosive defense. So he's going to take the minefield and play it on the ship. I'm, I'm below my defense, so I'm fine. This is a successful defense, so attacker must discard one psionic card. And look, I have a psionic card. So that goes in the discard. I don't get it now. So, I've attacked twice with my two ships. That's all I can do. Move on to phase two. I could purchase, but I don't have enough points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard this. I, so I still have it, but it's not clouding up my deck. Keeping my defense card. Let's get rid of this. When the attacking player gets rid of their uh, attack cards... That's the time that the defending player would get rid of their cards. So to clear it up. You leave them there to say, the ship has been attacked. I'm sorry. So defense, when, de when a defense card is played, you basically just play it to show it's blocked. You do its effect, and you immediately discard it before the active player's turn is over. That way, uh, I believe you can attack the same ship multiple times. Uh, in order to get through. So, since this attack was unsuccessful, I do not get, uh, oh, forgot to do that. I may pay one, oh yeah. I didn't, it wasn't successful, I don't get the red text. I also don't get a battle point, because it was unsuccessful attack. I'm down to one card. So, I will keep it and draw up. I got a midshipman. Another attack card, and a defense card, and the orangutan. 
Ring Tan. However you guys pronounce it. So that is my turn. It is done. We go over here. Uh, because he was attacked, he's got a... Twice, he's got a big handful. So he's got two ships. So we'll immediately play both his ships. It gives him lots of options now. It just so happens that he has three attack cards. So he can bring some pain back to Gorilla Khan. What do we have? So we have two, one, and oh. He cannot attack. He cannot attack with the medulla. He has no attack weight. So you cannot play a card on uh, a ship that does not have the stat. So he'll probably... I mean, I could play this out of turn. Well, no, because it wouldn't do anything. So I get two actions this turn. So what do I want to do? Do I want Maxim Guns? Do I want Psychic Amplifier? Or do I want the Hailstone Cannon? Let's see. May look through the Mercenary deck. Put the card of choice on top. That's good for sort of setting up the deck. We want to buy next. Also sets up for someone else. That would be helpful if you had fate points in your hand. Otherwise, you're sort of leaving it open for the other player, too. One fate point less. Again, I don't have anything to purchase. Um, this would let me acquire a fate point if I successfully attack. Then I really wouldn't know what the other player had, but I've got to sort of press my luck. So I'm going to take the Maxim Guns, and I'm going to play them on the Amygdala. I'm going to now target the Baboon. Since I'm not targeting the flagship, he doesn't get to draw a defense card. It was an explosive attack, so I go over here and look, and look, I have... An explosive defense. So again, I play it. I draw a card. But I don't have any cards to draw. It means I take my discard and I'm going to shuffle it. So I shuffle my deck. I draw a card for my uh, effect and I got a fate point. I immediately discard this one and we go back to uh, the walking mind. His attack was not successful, so that doesn't happen. But I still have actions I can do. I can use a psychic attack or freeze attack. I believe I'll do this. Psychic amplifier. Uh, keep doing that. <laughs> target. If I succeed, the target must discard one explosive card, which could be helpful. So I can get rid of his hand. So the forebrain is going to again attack the baboon, and I go through my defenses. Do I have a psychic defense? I do not have a psychic defense. So this this attack was successful. Ship goes down to the discard pile. Since it was successful, and now have Gorilla Khan has to discard one explosive card. But I don't have an explosive card. So I don't have to discard anything. But he was successful in his attack, so we come up here and look for battle points. What do we want to take? Gorilla Khan likes his operatives, so we're going to take the deep cover agent away from him. And we'll just put it under there. And I have a battle point. So, nothing left to do because I can only play defenses and ops. I don't want to play this defense because I won't get this effect. So there's no point in it. If I have another attack, I can keep that if I want. I think I will. So we're going to discard the two used cards and draw back up. So we got a shock rocket. We got midshipmen. And we got four 
some fate points to use next turn. So that's essentially how it goes, just back and forth attacking each other uh, until the end game scenario the end game is when three of these five decks are depleted. From what I'm playing, ninety percent of the time these are the three decks that are gonna go. Most people don't really see the benefit of extra ships yet. Um, I like extra ships because again you get extra actions. But people like the quick game and this will uh, add to the quick game. You get in here, you get some ops, you get some defense and attacks and you just beat the snot out of each other. So once these three piles are discarded, it's time to add up points. A quick little side note uh, that we didn't cover because uh, it didn't come up. When you draw fate cards, some of them have special sort of win acquired text. So that happens as soon as you get it for any reason, whether you draw it uh, from the midshipman or from an effect of a card. So for example, this one is when this card is acquired, all players must discard one Zeppelin from their Armada. So I would have to get rid of one of these two cards because you can't get rid of your flagship. If you had your experimental, you could get rid of your experimental too. But why would you do that? Because they're the best cards. Um, again, but when you when you uh, purchase this, I mean, when you use this to purchase, it goes back to discard. So yeah. So once all the fighting's done and all three of the decks are depleted, it's time to score up. So. You take all your cards. Your starting cards are worth nothing. So take them out, separate them, put them back over there. You take all your cards that you've acquired and you add up the points. So here we got 6, 7, 8, 10, 16, 18, 19, 22, uh, 28. I should probably go back and do that. I don't want to have math wrong on here. So. Three, six, three, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-four, five, eight. 12, 13, 14, 16, 19, 22, 24, 5, 8. That's right, 28. So I have 28 points in, in uh, scored cards. I come over here and I have three battle points. So... Silverback has won three battles. So I've acquired no matter what the no matter what the uh oh yeah. Should probably explain that. Once the last card is drawn, uh counterclockwise from the second last per hold on. So when the game end when the last deck is pulled the turn goes around back to the start player. So everyone but the start player would get it another turn, which could suck for him. Uh, in a two-player game, it just means if the start player ended the game, the other player would get a turn. If the uh, other player ended, then nothing happens, and we just score it up. But at any point after the game ends, if there's no cards to draw, but you still win battles... And you need battle points, you can use fate cards and just put them upside down to indicate that they're battle points. So that's what that so silverback has three battle points. He also has 15 points of fate cards. I believe it's the fate points and not the card itself. Uh I may be mistaken, but that's how we always do it. So, 15 points of fate. We come over to the brain, the walking mind, and he has 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 12, 14, 16, 19, 25 points of score. Uh, with 3 points, so 6. 728. He only has 11 
points of uh, fake cards left in his hand at the end of the game. So, Gorilla Khan is going to get three points for having the most. So, what are we, 28, 29, 30, 31, 34, 34 to whatever I said over here. So, Gorilla Khan has won. He is the victor, as he should be. So there you go. That is Zeppelin Attack. Really simple, easy. If you played a deck builder before, you're going to understand the mechanics perfectly. Nothing's really different. You launch ships. You attack if you can. You can defend if you can. You use your operatives to acquire fate points. Fate points to buy your special cards, including your experimental ships. We didn't really cover that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Go out. It's a re very, I mean, there's a lot packed into this box. I believe I paid $10 plus tax, whatever, for this. So, maybe it was 12 I don't remember. Really inexpensive, super fun micro deck building game. Expansion for this called Doomsday Weapons, which adds a third type of uh, ship called a scientific ship and more weapons and more fun and then also by uh, Evil Hat is a board game using the same world called Race to Adventure uh, I haven't seen it so it's just on my packet but if I ever get it I will definitely play it so there we go Zeppelin Attack